once they start fading like that, you're supposed to trim them back. Trim them back. Yeah. And then what do you do with the rose? Throw it in the trash. Oh, here, I want the rose. Oh, ow. Ooh. <laughs> That's what I get for threatening to throw it away. I'll take them. Right. There's something crawling on me. That's a nasty something. Do you want me to save you? No, I got it. <gasps> You're a monster. Congratulations, you now own the best flower press money can buy. That's what it says right there. So this little contraption here allows me to take fresh rose petals straight out of Mrs. Brown's garden and dry them in the microwave. It's basically these two pieces of felt and then in the middle of those two pieces of felt are two sheets of cotton and then two hard plastic outer shells. You want to make sure that they don't touch each other. Now we're just going to blast a 30 second wave. All right, so after 30 seconds, this whole thing comes out of the microwave. So you don't want to, you don't want to do it all at once. You want to do it in bursts. Bursts. That's too many S's. I don't know. Bursting. It's amazing how dark they go. And you can see here we've got these two touching, which is, is no bueno. It's no good, we don't want them touching. Let's see if we can't move that without ruining everything. There we go. And then they'll go back in for a second burst. They've got a total of 45 seconds. The first thing I tried was avoiding that step and just doing it for 45 seconds. And that was no good. <laughs> they burned. They literally burned to a crisp. Do we really need that many beeps microwave? I don't know. I don't think we do. And there we go. Dried rose petals. It feels, now it feels like tissue paper. It's really thin petal. I feel like my microwave trying to lure me for a romantic date. Just leave me alone, microwave. I don't want Netflix and lean cuisine tonight. Look at this, I turned your rose petals into flat, lifeless paper products. I'm so proud. Yeah. It's got an almost leathery feel to it, doesn't it? Does. You know what they almost remind me of? It's butterfly wings. They do. That yeah. pattern in there. I don't, I don't know how many it's going to take, but I figure I'm just going to go ahead and dry them all because, I mean, why not, right? Yeah, I think you are going to need a lot. I think I'm going to need a lot as well. <laughs> My carta is basically thin layers of either paper or cloth saturated with resin. Today, we're going to use rose petals instead of paper. Will it work? I don't know. With a little mold release and set that aside. Today we're going to be using Total Boat resin. This is the high performance resin. Shouldn't take too much. So while I was at the hardware store, the other thing I bought was this little section of PVC pipe and another end cap. And my thought was, I think I should just be able to use this as a tamper to kind of push everything down. It's actually a little tight. Let me round these over real fast on the belt sander. Oh yeah, that's better. Let's pour a small amount of resin in and start folding in some petals. I'm going to just try sort of fold these over. I think this is going to work. They're so pretty, we're just going to Shove them in there, though. Mm. 
All right, there's six of the yellow ones. These. And if they're folded over and everything, that's actually fine. I don't see how to avoid that. As you can see, we're getting sort of a wrinkly look here, but I think that's okay. I'm just going to do my best to keep layering. It's definitely becoming harder to keep the layers because all these keep wrinkling over on top of each other. So it's building up more around the outside than in the center. So I've got these little ones here. And I'm going to try stacking these tiny ones. It is feeling pretty densely packed though. I'm having a hard time pushing down into the rest of that. So I think we're going to use every single one of them. There's only a handful left here. So I'm just going to go ahead and put them all in. So let's give this a tap. It's almost silly looking in there. All right. Here it is out of the pressure pot. Looks like we lost some resin there at the top. It's definitely. What'd you say? Uh, looks like we lost some resin there at the top, I said. You need to give me a heads up. Heads up. I'm going to start filming. So here it is out of the mold. Two things right off the bat. First off, it looks super cool. Uh, the second thing that jumps out at me, it appears to be glue starved. While all the layers appear to be compacted, there's tons of little gaps. Yeah, so I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna stick it right here in a Dixie cup, and I'm going to pour the resin right over the top of it. So you can see it's probably covered by a half an inch of resin there. I'm going to stick it back in the pressure pot. It may... oh! These chuck jaws are made for Dixie Cups. That's perfect. And this is what I used to turn rings with. It's basically just a piece of wood that I've turned a small tenon on. It's called a jam chuck. Things are going well, I should think. All right, so I've brought the tailstock up with a sacrificial piece of wood here, pushed up against that. And let's try it again. That contraption was getting in the way of filming, so I wrapped a piece of electrical tape around the tenon and added a little thickness to it. Seems to be holding better now. The aforementioned contraption just fell off the bench, probably in disgust.
we still got a little ways to go here. It's not quite the right size yet. I think that's good. We can switch over to sandpaper. This material is so delicate. While sanding, I mean, I keep losing little bits of material. While I was looking at that, I found another place where we've got a, a break right here. Well, things went from bad to worse. Trying to remove it off the jam chuck. Three more pieces ripped off of it. And my fingers are now covered in CA glue. And I don't care about that. Oh, I just ripped off another chunk. But it does make assembling it harder because it's now sticking to my fingers. Look at this lovely thing we've made. Oh. And we're gonna go really, really slowly this time. At 180 and going up through 800. Let me go grab the micro mesh. My favorite polishing method is micro mesh pads. It's its own grit system. Starts at 1500, goes through to 12,000. The water really helps to cut down on any dust and keeps the pad cool so it doesn't burn the material. Okay, that looks really cool. <laughs> Rose micarta ring. I think this might be something no one has seen before. This started off as live rose petals, dried, pressed, turned into micarta, turned on the lathe, destroyed on the lathe, reborn, and finished. <laughs> This was the most difficult ring I've ever made, which is saying something because I made a colored pencil ring back in 2015 that almost killed me. It almost has a look of stained glass. There are so many layers to the petals. I think we've got close to 100 petals flattened down. The contrast between the yellow petals and the purple petals. After seeing it for the first time, Mrs. Brown looked at it and declared as a Hufflepuff that this was absolutely her house ring. I did check it under the black light. It definitely glows under the black light. You get sort of this vibe of like a gas giant. It sort of reminded me of Jupiter. We had a couple major hiccups and we still were able to get to a finished object and that always makes me happy. It doesn't have the highest possible finish I've ever had on an object, but once I got it back into round, polished, I, I just didn't feel like pushing it. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe and I will catch you guys next time.